During today's webinar, Katie Grimes, a Bank Tell Account Executive, and Shay Adrian, our Learning and Development Specialist, will be walking you through a product tour of Bank Tell's accounting solution, Ascend. So let's get started. Thanks, Abby. Appreciate your um, appreciate that introduction. My name is Katie Grimes, and we have Shay here, who will be giving us a product tour and walking you through the system. So just to kind of give you a recap, our goal today is to give you a quick intro into our company. We're going to discuss who we are just briefly and what we do. And then we're going to take a deeper dive into what a typical financial institution's AP process looks like today and compare that to what we can do for you with our completely paperless invoice to pay process with our accounts payable system. So to give you some background on our company, Banktel has over 1,700 financial institutions that are clients. We have been in the business for over 27, 28 years, excuse me, and have served financial institutions since the very beginning. We offer an accounts payable suite with workflow that completely streamlines your accounts payable process from start to finish. And with this product that you're going to see today, you're going to see how we can, can do that with a completely paperless process. We were acquired in, uh, by Avid Exchange in the end of 2019. And so since that acquisition, we've been able to add even more development and features within our system to, to help build it into a stronger and more efficient application for you to take advantage of today. So uh, we also integrate into several different core systems. So we'll be, you know, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have individually about that. Um, but, but again, Banktel has been around for quite some time. Can you share the next screen, please? Okay, and so just to kind of give you an idea, as I mentioned, we have over 1,700 clients all over the United States. Here's just a view of kind of what that looks like. You know, we have so many customers that have been using our products for such a long time that, you know, one of the one of the strong suits with Banktel is not only our product and, you know, it having a completely uh, efficient process with accounts payable, but also our customer base. I mean, we have customers that have been with us since the very beginning. We have tons of longtime customers and we have a great knowledge base to access of as far as best practices and information. And one of the things that Banktel does is you know, we offer some of the best customer service that you can find as far as uh, your financial accounting process goes. So we're certainly here for our clients and you know, hoping to be able to establish a relationship with even more. All right. So Let's jump into the next slide where we're going to kind of go through what it looks like for most of most banks and credit unions today that are that are using either you know Excel based AP or just a singular accounts payable system that is built into their core. So if you can see on the left hand side, we're calling that the manual AP. You know, usually you have someone at the bank or credit union who will receive the invoice from the vendor. When they receive it, they could be receiving it via email or mail. They take that, they may have to print it out, physically sign it, scan it back in, email it to the, the in, email the invoice to the approver, where then the approver can sign off on it if there's an approver required. And then the approver emails it to AP. So you can see there's lots of back and forth. There's lots of manual handling of that invoice. Even if you have a, a AP system that's built into your core today or you know in this scenario, this is this is just someone using AP to cut their checks. You know, there's lots of manual processes before and after where you're handling that invoice before it gets to AP. And then even after when you're if you're printing checks solely, for example, you know, we have a way, and we'll show you this today and how we can automate that. So right now, the process could be that you're printing your check, you're having to take those to the CEO, CFO, you know, someone at your, at your institution to sign off on and then go out and mail those to the vendors. And there's a mixture of different scenarios that we've run into where people are either just, you know, easily sent them out through their mail carrier or others driving to the post office to, to take to get them out. So, you know, whatever scenario you feel very familiar with, what we can do for you is help automate that entire 
process. So on the right hand side, you know, we can, our system will allow your vendors to email the invoice to you where our AP system can capture it. And then basically from there, your AP person can do what they need to do to, and then let the system assign the approver, the approver can approve it. And then the third step is uh, automated payment process. And so we can take this, you know, seemingly eight day, eight to 10 day process down to a two to three day process for you. If you still require multiple people to see that invoice, maybe you have someone in AP and approver, you know, and then you have the payment. So that's our goal today is to show you how we can take what a typical AP process looks like for many financial institutions and streamline that with this completely paperless invoice to pay. All right, so let's look at our next slide. Now here, again, this is kind of visual, looks at it a different way. As you can see, we have a product called Invoice Inbox, and this is what Shay will be showing you today, where the invoices are sent from the vendor directly to your accounts payable email address, and then our system can capture that invoice and pull it directly into the accounts payable system with the image so that the AP person and the person receiving the invoice, they're not having to manually handle it at all. It goes directly into AP. And then from there, the AP person can assign the GL allocations, review the invoice details that are pulled in from that invoice invoice and then they can submit it for approval and our system will notify the approver electronically or they can electronically review the invoice all of the details and the attachment and then they can approve hold or decline electronically and then once it's done it immediately goes to your APQ ready to be processed which then we have a product called Avid Pay which is an integrated bill pay option, which will allow you to select so that you can say, hey, I want to pay this bill, but you know, I'm going to let I'm going to let bank tell handle that for me. And so by choosing Avid Pay as the as the payment option, you're selecting that you want this payment made by a certain date for a certain amount to a certain vendor and then you let us handle that for you. And we have the ability to pay vendors by check, ACH, or credit card, depending on their preferred method. So our goal today is to walk you through this process within the product and help you actually see how this can be accomplished. So I'm going to, to wrap this up and, let, and send it over to Shay. And Shay, can you, can you take it from here? Yep, I can. Thanks, Katie. I am going to show you guys. I'm going to switch screens on you um, from um, the slide deck, and we're going to take a look at our Ascend application. So I'm actually going to take you through several different things today. We're going to look at uh, parts of our Ascend application. I'm going to switch it over and show you a couple of emails so that you understand um, exactly how um, the vendor will be able to communicate or have some communication from the Ascend application knowing that they got um, the invoice and um, we're going to take care of processing for you. So you'll see me change up my screen several times today. Um, what you guys are looking at here currently is the Ascend application. I am going to take you guys uh, into accounts payable so we can take a look at a couple of things here. Um, so we're going to start out in this um, invoice to uh, payment, this paperless application. Let me get logged back in here. Um, I'm going to start you out and show you uh, a couple of things that um, kind of come up with the invoice inbox initially. So what you guys are looking at is our dashboard for the account payable user. And this is where we house all the important information that our AP user is going to need to keep track of on a daily basis. So on the top here, you can kind of see all of these invoices sitting out here in various states of approval. Um, I'll show you that approval process here in just a second. But I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here and show you guys this invoice inbox. So the starting point of a invoice to payment in a paperless um, situation 
is we are going to allow your vendors, so your vendors are going to send us a PDF or send a PDF to uh, an email account that you guys established so they can send it to say, um, you know, avid exchange at accountspayable.com. And then at that point in time, those invoices get captured into an invoice inbox. So I'm gonna kind of show you what this looks like. This is a list of some invoices that are sitting out there waiting for me to convert them into an invoice. So what I wanna show you guys about this invoice inbox is number one, it's a really simple process to set up. You guys probably already have an accounts payable inbox that you have vendors sending information to you. Um, these would be required to be a PDF, so it makes it even simpler. They can create the PDF, send it to you. We're going to capture them here. But I want to show you guys what the, um, the uh, vendor will see when they uh, actually send that in. So not only do they send it in, they will get a communication back saying, hey, we got this um, image from you, and it'll show... Uh, where it was sent to, who it was sent from, what the subject line was, and what the attachment looks like. So they know that they got something, uh, that, that one of their uh, invoices was actually captured into accounts payable. They don't have to call you and wonder if, if it was actually there. So, you know, in the Ascend application, you as an AP user will see that, but on your uh, vendor side, they're actually going to be able to see um, that that information was received. So back over here on the invoice inbox, I'm going to take it into this invoice inbox and we're going to go in and we're going to create this invoice um, from this particular image. So the really cool thing about how this works is as vendors send um, these images to you guys to get captured by invoice inbox, we are actually going to be able to identify where those come from and we're going to be able to connect those into the vendor that is already in accounts payable. So you guys will notice as I go in here and hit create invoice, it is going to move me to the invoice entry screen. And then here is the image that the um, vendor has sent me to the invoice inbox, but you'll notice right down here under the vendor name, it's already been associated with that vendor that's in my system. So not to get too technical about that, but we actually look at the email that came, uh, that this image actually came from, and we associate that with the vendor um, for each of those invoices that come in from that location, which makes it really, really simple. So the accounts payable user can basically look at the image um, and complete this invoice. So I'm gonna kind of go through here and complete this invoice for you. So we're going to go in and key in a couple of things. Invoice number. Um, you guys will notice my description, my approval process. And when I come down here to create some allocations for this, these are coming from the, um, there's some repetition that happens during invoice entry to make it really simple for you guys to key this stuff in. But if you're paying someone over and over again, you'll notice that that information will populate on your screen for you, but you'll have the capability of going in and um, changing anything. You know, if you need to split this in, say there are a couple of different um, branches that this is gonna be associated with, we can split into um, different branches if we need to. And these are gonna be the allocations that hit your core system. So once the invoice entry is complete, then we're gonna save that. But here's what I wanna show you guys. So we've actually eliminated the paper invoice because we have that sent to invoice inbox. We have pulled that in and created the invoice out of it. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna save this. And then I'm gonna pop back in here and kind of show you what this invoice looks like. So I'm gonna uh, click on this review invoice details and pop this uh, page back up for you. So this is our complete record of the invoice. And if you'll notice up here on the top, it's already indicated to me that I have a user who needs to approve this. So what has happened at the moment that I saved this, there was an email notification that went out to my approver. And um, you can set them up for email or you can even add to that a text messaging to make it even simpler. So they're gonna get a notification 
And what's going to happen, and I'll show you the approval process here in just a second, they're going to be able to go in and review the invoice, everything that the accounts payable user keyed in, the actual image of that so that they can compare that to the invoice um, and then they can approve it or decline it. So what is, what is um, going to be part of your record on the invoice is the information. So here's the original image that came out of the invoice inbox. And so we document that for you. Below that is going to be all the information that was originally keyed in by the accounts payable user. So you'll see things like invoice number, amount due. But if you look right over here, there is approval process that was assigned. So during invoice entry, you can assign an approval process. And I'm going to take a, a couple of minutes to show you a little bit about our approval process so you can see um, how simple it is to set up. You can set up some very complicated approval processes. If you've got several different people who need to see this, um, you can set it up that way. If you want to designate other criteria like amounts or branch codes, things like that, um, you can do that. So there's an approval process that we um, will track here for you. You'll see your allocations, um, a history, who's going to have to see this. We'll talk more about this in just a second. And then again, an attachment and some audit history. So moving back up here to the approval process, I want to show you guys how this particular invoice is going to go through approval. So I'm going to open up this process for you. This is what our approval uh, processes look like when you are designing them. And this is a pretty simplified approval process. Um, if you guys look down here, it's kind of two steps. It's going to go to uh, one user initially. There's no criteria. This is a person who's always going to have to uh, go in and approve that invoice. And then below that, there is another user who is going to be um, approving it, but only if the invoice reaches $500. So I have some criteria that's tied to this um, in the amount of um, the invoice. So you'll notice I have minimum amounts, maximum amounts. Those are all criteria that you can use. We can use other criteria such as vendors, um, users who key these information, these invoices in, vendor type, even account numbers. I would tell you amounts and account numbers are probably the simplest way to uh, do approvals. But you can have as many steps in those approval processes as you want. So you're not really, um, you know, on this particular approval process, you can see that there are two. But if there were three people that needed to see it, you could. You can even add groups of users in here. So I have one user in here, but I could actually add more than one person here that would have access to approve this invoice. So we make it really simple to move these invoices from user to user or groups of users. Um, and you have to remember, because this is a mobile, I mean, because this is a uh, web, uh, web-based web application, these uh, approvals can be done through a mobile device. So you'll have users who, if they want to log in on their mobile device to their Ascend application, they can go in and quickly do an approval, you know, on the fly if they happen not to be in the office. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind. And it, that's really any mobile device, whether it's a phone or a, or a tablet or something like that. So when we talk about these approval processes, understand this is just one way to simplify the approval process, but there are certainly different ways that we can go in um, and set up approval processes for you. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here to one of my unpaid invoices. So this is the one that we were just working on. Once the invoice is here and once we have designated an approval process, you'll notice right here it says unapproved. So as an AP user, You'll be able to look at this and say, OK, well, I can't pay this one. It is simply unapproved at this point in time. So I have to wait on my approver to go in and approve this. So as an AP user, we can see that. We can see those things that are approved. We can see those things that are unapproved. Um, but waiting on the approver typically doesn't take long, especially if you set them up for both notifications and email and text message. So I'm going to show you on the approval side what your approver is going to see and simplify that down so that you're not having to shuffle papers to them. They're going to log in. They're not going to be logging into accounts payable. They're going to log into an approval queue. So I bet I have to log back in here. Give me just a second. So when they log in, when your user logs in, they are going to log into their approval queue. So what they're really seeing is just the invoice page and an image that they can view. 
Okay, so this is what an approver sees. When they log in, they're gonna see a list of invoices that they have been assigned. So you can see a lot about this actual invoice, the dates, vendor, this is the invoice. So this is the link that they're gonna be able to look at. This is the image that they're gonna be able to look at. And then you'll notice over here, there's some descriptions. This is Avid Pay. So this is gonna be a, the automated payment that we talk about a little bit later and the amount. So in order to successfully approve this invoice, they're gonna have the ability to open up this page. So this is gonna be the invoice page. There's not gonna be anything different about what your approver sees as opposed to um, what the account payable department sees. So you'll notice this is the exact same page, invoice details. It uh, gives us access to view this attachment. It gives us the ability to see everything that the accounts payable user keyed in. You can see the allocations and even drill into that so that you can see the titles to those if you have approvers who are not familiar um, with actual numbers on your general ledger, and then the approval history. So this particular invoice is gonna to have to go through two people and you can see that here in the history. It has to be seen by this one and approved and then it has to be seen by this user and approved. So your approver is gonna have several different um, options available to them. After they view this invoice, they're gonna close out of it and they're gonna be prompted to utilize either approve, hold or decline. If it's approved, then the system automatically creates a notification going to the next approver in line. If it's held or declined, that user is gonna to have to plug in a comment. It will be required on a hold or decline. The notification would at that point in time go back to the account's payable user so that they could decide what to do with this invoice. If it gets declined and they say, hey, check the general ledger number, I think this is the wrong branch code, AP can make that correction, resave it, and then it'll start the approval process all over again. But if it needs to be approved, then the user can go in. They can, at that point in time, put a comment in. It is not required on an approval. So once this is approved, then it's just automatically gonna create the next notification that goes out. And so for this invoice, if we go back in and take a look at it, you can see that it's actually been approved here and now it's waiting for this user. This is the user that just got a notification, okay? So that's gonna be the first notification. And then I'm gonna take you guys back over here to my other application. We're gonna go in and approve this over here so that we can create a payment out of it. So again, I'm gonna go in here to my invoices after I get my notification, go in here to approval, and then this is sitting out here. So. As the secondary approver, I can open this up, take a look, see who worked on it before I got a hold of it. And then once I close out of here, I would be able to approve it, okay? So now that it's finally completely approved, it's gonna show differently for the accounts payable department. They'll easily be able to see uh, what process it's sitting in. So you can see right here under approved, I have this new invoice sitting out here, okay? So if it's approved, it can be paid until it becomes an approved status, it cannot be paid. So all these other ones that are sitting out here can't be paid. And that's just part of the approval process that we move through. So once the invoice has been captured by Ascend, the AP person has keyed the information in, selected the approval process, the system has taken that invoice through the complete workflow, through all of the approvers who need to see it, then at that point in time, we can go in and we can create payments out of those approved invoices. So I'm gonna move you guys over here to the payment um, option. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna concentrate on Avid Pay. So this is the automated payment where the user is not having to cut a check. We're not having to do any extra information um, on this invoice. We're just basically gonna process this record through Avid Pay and then we're gonna let um, Avid Exchange take care of that payment and take care of our vendor for us. So I'm gonna open this up. You guys are gonna see a listing of items that can be paid. So these are approved invoices. We're gonna go down here and we're gonna work with this one specifically. So it's approved. I'm gonna select it for um, payment and then I'm gonna hit next. Now you'll see a window that pops up that says we are checking this against 
the OFAC list, that's one of the benefits of using a send is anytime you go in and do a payment run or add a vendor, we're going to go ahead and scan that against the OFAC list. And if there's a problem, we'll let you know right away and you can make a determination on that vendor. But then you'll see right here, there's a payment date, a check number, and then we're going to automatically um, use this uh, Avid Pay upload. So I'm just going to go ahead and process this and you're going to see this next screen populate. So this is what happens on an Avid Pay. We've actually created a payment. So along with the invoice, we now have a new record called um, a payment. So there's this uh, new link that you can see down here in the bottom left-hand corner. You'll notice when I open this up, I have a payment that is going to be um, utilized through Avid Pay. So at this point in time, as a user for accounts payable, I'm done with this payment because this the file is going to be uploaded to Avid Exchange and they're going to take care of the processing um, of this payment for the vendor. Okay, and you can actually um, watch this. There's an Avid Pay history. So you can see right here, I created um, the payment and it was uploaded to Avid Pay. And so at this point in time, um, I'm going to show you another example of this here in just a second that's a little more uh, complete so that you can kind of see start to finish what the Avid Pay history will look like. But once the file is uploaded to um, Avid Exchange, Avid Exchange will look at that vendor and decide whether that vendor is already a part of their extensive network of vendors that they're already paying. And if it is a part of the network, then they are going to go ahead and they are going to pay that vendor based on an agreement they already have with that vendor, how they want to be paid. If that vendor, if your vendor is not part of the Avid uh, Exchange network, then Avid Exchange is going to reach out to that vendor. They're going to talk to the vendor about the three payment types that they have, which is a virtual credit card. They can issue your um, vendor a virtual credit, a one-time virtual credit card for um, um, a specific amount. They can offer an ACH or they can go ahead and offer a check if that's what your vendor wants to um, basically continue getting. So that is an arrangement that happens between um, Avid and your vendor. It's not an option that you really have to worry about because that, as it clears. So this is an image of the cleared check that you would see in your Ascend application should you ever need to know what that check actually looked like. So you get uh, an image of the front and the back of that clear check in the Ascend application, which makes it even easier to track, okay? So once the payment is um, processed, then at that point in time, Avid Exchange takes care of the rest of the processing. And then historically, if you need to know what's happened with that, you can go back and simply pull up that payment history and review that, okay? So that kind of gives you a brief synopsis of our invoice to pay um, to show you how you can move from um, a multi-step process to really a non-touch process of a paperless um, invoice capture, invoice entry, approval, and then the payment of um, that vendor without you know, ever having to do anything other than working within your program. Um, we're going to go ahead and open this up to any questions that you guys have. Um, we will certainly answer any questions that you have. You may have questions about how the process works. You may have questions about how this works with your core system. Um, Katie and I will definitely field those for you um, at this point in time. Hey there. Thanks, Jay. That was great. All right, so we're going to open it up for questions. Please send your questions through the chat, and we're going to have Abby, our moderator, read those questions um, out loud. So, Abby, do you have some questions coming in? Yeah, Katie, we do we have a couple. Uh, so, start with this one. Can approval process flow through budgeted versus non-budgeted expenses to different approvers? That is a great question. So within our system, you have the ability to set up multiple codes on your GL assignment. So if you have situations where you need to track expenses 
based on a project or a loan or maybe you want to do budget codes, then you would be able to use those miscellaneous codes to help you assign those expenses to those particular items. It's a great question. Thanks, Katie. And there are a couple of questions uh, revolving around core systems. Are there certain cores that your AP system integrates to? Shay, I'll let you take that question. Um, we do uh, cover a lot of different core systems. Certainly, we can answer questions on specific cores if you guys have that. But we utilize core systems like uh, Jack Henry in both um, Silver Lake and 2020. We use um, Horizon. So um, CSI, there's a lot of different core systems that we use. They're all very unique in the way that we upload files to those. But because we have such great relationships with um, these core um, systems, you know, we're able to, you know, really make it pretty seamless as far as uh, information that needs to be uploaded. There's very, you know, if, if you have any extra steps at all in uploading debits and credits to your core system, um, it would be one or two. Most of the time, once you create the file, then it gets captured by your core system or it gets, you know, sent to a specific location on your core side and then they will um, pull it up and process it for you. Yes, and I, I want to add to that, you know, what the one of the big advantages of using Banktel is that we actually specialize in integrating to multiple cores, like Shay said, and, you know, we have a team that's focused on, on making sure that that works seamlessly. So even if it's a core that she didn't mention, we have several, several different cores that we interface to. So um, even if it's one that she didn't mention, you know, you can certainly reach out to us and we can walk you through the specifics of how we post to your core. Great, thank you. And we do have a couple uh, revolving kind of around Avid Pay. Uh, would I have control over what type of payment to send my vendor? Yes. Okay, thanks. so go ahead, Shay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So yeah, so as far as what the um, as as a user of Ascend and Avid Pay, when you guys decide to use the Avid Pay application, you guys don't have to worry about how the vendor gets paid. That's something that um, Avid Exchange will take care of. They do all the reach out to your vendor and they let your vendor actually pick the payment that works best for them. Some want a virtual credit card that works for them. Some prefer just to still receive checks in the mail. Um, and so they will, as a vendor, you know, once Avid Exchange reaches out to them, they will decide, you know, go through all those options with them and the vendor gets to decide what type of a payment. Uh, preferred payment they want to receive. Great. Yes. And does the hey, can, oh, sorry, go ahead. Can, Abby, can I add on to that? You know, one question we get a lot, um, Shay, is if we have some people that have some vendors like the local booster club and, you know, someone they want to hand a check to, can you explain how they would, I mean, how, how they would do that within the AP system if that kind of situation arises? Um, outside of Avid, Avid Pay? Yes. Yeah. So we do have in Ascend, you know, our that added pay is just one of the, the four options that we have available for payment. Um, within Ascend, you guys are able to continue to create checks. So if you want to create a check in-house, you can certainly do that. Um, we have direct deposits. A lot of our organizations like to do direct deposits for, for things like employee reimbursement, things like that. That is an option. That's a payment option uh, that is in Ascend. Um, and then we have ACH and, and Avid Pay. So um, along with Avid Pay, which is, you know, just is going to keep it easier for you because you don't have anything to uh, create other than uploading the file. But you do have other options. You're not, you know, relegated to just Avid Pay. Um, you know, if you need to create checks within your organization, which certainly we still all use checks, um, that is a payment option that's available to you. Great. And does the AP person input the vendor name and other info into the software itself, or is it read into it automatically? Okay, I I'll take that. that one. Oh, okay, sorry, Katie. 
<laughs> All right, so just to answer that question, the invoice inbox system will capture the information based on the sender's email address. So, for example, if that vendor has emailed you an invoice before, then the system's going to automatically recognize that sender's email address and assign the vendor to that invoice based on who's sending it to you. And when that vendor is assigned, it's going to then use machine learning to recommend the most, most likely account information and branch information and allocations and descriptions on your invoice based on your previously paid invoices. So it uses that machine learning to recognize the sender's email, and which vendor to assign. And then based on prior history, it recommends the type, the information on your invoice, which then you're able to edit and update and save as needed. Great, and uh, Katie, could you go into our Shay, how Banktel software handles year end tax reporting? Oh, sure. So tax reporting in Ascend is super, super simple. Um, we actually give you the ability to track a vendor for 1099 purposes, and we let you actually track multiple categories if that's something that you need to do. Um, sometimes we have to track, say, non-employee compensation and then rent, and we want to issue that on the same 1099. So you're actually able to do that um, at the vendor level in Ascend. Once you have tracked, say, from January to December, all of your 1099 information, you are able to go back in and uh, do adjustments to those totals. So say you missed an invoice or maybe something didn't get um, marked correctly and you want to go back in and change those totals up, you will have the ability to do that. Once that's done, our system makes it super simple. You basically go to our uh, year-end menu, you print those 1099s out, um, the form, the information, the vendor information, tax identification numbers, what needs to be issued on the 1099, all print out um, straight from the software. You can send those out in the mail to your vendor. And then as far as uh, reporting to the IRS, uh, you create a fire file. If you don't already have a fire file with the IRS, you can simply set one of those up. We'll even show you how to do it. Um, it takes probably less than five minutes. Everything's pretty much online anymore. And so once you've established a FIRE account with the IRS, there is a file that you would create and upload to your FIRE account um, with the IRS. And then you can go back. What's really super great about a FIRE account, you can go back immediately and see if they accepted your file. And then if you have, uh, maybe you forgot someone, you can um, upload a new file and send that over to the IRS too very quickly. So super simple process. Great. Uh, and is that OFAC check only done with the Avid Pay option? So the OFAC check, um, there's actually two things that we do with OFAC. When we, when uh, as a user, you go in and you add a brand new vendor to the software, we're going to do an automatic check on OFAC. And if there's an issue or if there's a match, um, we'll let you know immediately if there's a problem and let you investigate it. If you ever go back in and save that vendor, we're going to run that OFAC check again. And then in any payment processing, not just checks, not Avid Pay, but anytime you go in and do a process of any kind, payment related um, in Ascend, we're going to automatically scan the vendors that are included in that payment batch. So um, that happens on every payment processing, not just checks, not just Avid Pay. We do that every single time. We track that. We have uh, an app called OFAC. So anytime you want to know or anytime somebody is interested in the tracking that is being done on OFAC and you need to create a report, you would be able to go to that application, pull a report. You can even do a full vendor scan from the application. So we don't do a full vendor scan from AP, but that is an option that you have from the application. We only do automated on new vendors and then payment processing just to kind of keep it, keep it simple for you. Perfect. Well, thank you, Katie and Shay. I believe that does cover all the question portion of today's webinar. Um, if there are any other questions, everyone, uh, just please reach out to Katie or Shay to get those answered. Um, and thank you all for joining us today and have a great evening.